Hello loves, my name is Josie and if you are new to my channel, welcome to Eccentric. This is the Vedic Astrology Basics Part 2 video, okay? What we are going to do in this video is we are going to create a birth chart, okay? We're going to create a birth chart based off of my birth data since that's easy to remember, right? So... Let me move my big old head out the way. Bring this up. Bring this up. There we are. All righty. So we are going to we're going to create my bird chart. Okay. And then we're going to place some planets in the chart. But for now, you're going to sit through me creating my bird chart. I'm an Aquarius rising. So that there's going to be an 11 in my first house. We're going to go 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I'm highly focused. Nine and ten. Okay. So you are looking at the way that the signs are placed in my chart as an Aquarius rising, okay? I am not going to use the abbreviations for the signs because in this video, I'm going to be placing planets in these squares. And in traditional um, Vedic charts, you don't see the abbreviation for the sign, you just see the number. So understand again from the other video that this 11 means Aquarius, this 12 means Pisces, one is Aries, and so on, okay? So I've got, Venus in my 12th house. Let's work on that E. <laughs> that E was not easy. I've got Venus in my 12th house. <laughs> I'm trying to like recall my chart. Jeez Louise. I may have to actually get up. I'll be right back. I gotta grab my chart. How rude is that? <laughs> I thought I, I thought I knew something, but my brain has not been very reliable like all day. So y'all gotta bear with me on this. Um, I thought that it was just me waking up like like this, but I've been like this all day actually. Okay, okay, I got Mercury in the um, 12th house as well. I'm gonna put it over here so y'all can clearly see it. These E's are killing me. We got this and my Mercury is a natal retrograde. So I'm gonna just put that R right there for you to understand that Mercury was retrograde when I was born. Go figure, right? Okay, so, <laughs> so I've got the sun 
and Neptune in my 11th house. For the ease. Why did I put Jupiter there? Jupiter is in my 11th house right now. <laughs> but y'all just please have patience with me. I just, no, that's an S. <laughs> Okay, everything is going to be just fine. Okay, this is the sun, and this is Neptune. It is not easy riding with this. <laughs> and then I have K2, which is the south node of the moon in my 11th house in Italy. Okay? <laughs> Now in my 10th house, I've got the moon. Yeah, it's okay, y'all. I've got Jupiter. And I've got Uranus. Okay, in my <clears throat> ninth house, I've got Saturn. <laughs> that looks like a five. <sighs> Let's try that again. I have got Saturn. And Pluto. And then way over here in the fifth house, I've got Rahu, which is the north node of the moon. And in my first house, my ascendant, I've got none other than Mars. Oh, that's funky looking. Let's try this. Let's try that again. I got Mars up here. Okay. So in this video, we're going to get into, obviously, the planets, okay? <laughs> So these are the planets in the houses. This is what it looks like, but much messier. When you have the, come on. When you have the sign, which is right here, the sign is the number. And then you've also got a planet in that same house, okay? So this is Aquarius right here, this 11, and then you've got Mars here, okay? You're not gonna have numbers for planets or anything like that. I want y'all to understand because we are literally taking this bite by bite. This is Aquarius because I'm an Aquarius rising and this is Mars. Mars is in my first house in my birth chart, okay? So <laughs> what does that look like? When I search a birth chart, okay, this is how I like to do it. I like to search the, I like to search the sign in the house Okay, so I'm gonna search Aquarius, the 11, in the first house, or 
interchangeably, you can say Aquarius rising. I'm going to learn about that first, okay? And then if there's a planet there, which there is one here, then I'm gonna put Mars in the first house. We will not be using Mars rising, okay? We will be searching Mars in the first house. Once I learn about Mars being in the first house, then guess what I'm going to do next? I'm going to search Mars in Aquarius. Okay, that's going to give me the most detail. So I work from the outside in. So again, Aquarius in the first house or Aquarius rising, right? And then Mars in the first house, right? and then Mars in Aquarius. That's how I search my birth chart. And I do one house at a time. So when you're learning this and you're learning how to read your chart and you wanna search your birth chart and find out, well, what does this mean? Take it house by house. You don't really have to worry about these other houses that don't have planets in them super loud like so much has been against this video i this is my third take y'all just bear with me with these sirens because i can't even hear myself okay my third take my nerves whose nerves my nerves all right now are you kidding me right now? <laughs> okay. So this was simple. My first house is simple. There's only one planet there. But my 10th house is a different story. And so is my 11th house, okay? If I want to search my 10th house and find out what's, what's all of this over here going on, I'm going to search Scorpio, because Scorpio is the eighth sign, in the 10th house. That's going to be my key word, Scorpio in the 10th house. That's going to be the first thing I search. The second thing I'm going to search is Moon in the 10th house, Jupiter in the 10th house, Uranus in the 10th house. Okay, then after that, I'm going to go back and search moon in Scorpio, Jupiter in Scorpio, Uranus in Scorpio to get the full picture working from the outside in. So, of course, this house, researching this one house is going to take way longer than this one. Okay. And if you really want to be thorough, once you're done searching all of your houses that have planets in them, then you can go to the planet, the houses that don't have planets in them and do a simple search. Aries in the third house is what I would search here. Aries in the third house. There's no planets there. That's where your search ends. Okay. And this is pretty much how I search my birth chart. This is outside of any aspects, any current transits. This is, this is, we're not doing any of that. We're just looking at our birth chart, where the planets were when we were born and getting an understanding of what that energy looks like. Okay. So that is the way that I want you to practice searching your own birth chart. Now, another thing I want to talk to you about as far as Vedic astrology is concerned is K2 and Rahu. K2 is the south node of the moon. Okay. Rahu is the north node of the moon. That's pretty much it. I want y'all to understand that that's what they are. 
okay? Now, the next thing that I wanna cover, because it was there, then it wasn't there, then it was there, is, um, <laughs> let's see here, what are we covering? What are we doing? Oh. Um, I, I taught, I told you the birth chart search tips before I explained to you what the difference is between the sign and the planet. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and then I'm going to come back in with a clean chart. There we go. Now. Everybody knows by now, if you watched part one, this is a house. The houses don't move. This is the area of life that is affected, okay? The area of life. Um, now, if you want to, you can go and search what each house means, okay? The first house is your identity, your physical body you just got here. Okay, the 12th house is when you die, you pass, the afterlife. So, you know, I just got here, value systems, you know, neighborhood, friends, school, things like that, home, ancestry, mother, you know, um, kids, romance, um, higher learning, like college and stuff, um, health, and so on. Like, I want you to go on your own and research the houses, okay? This is the first house. So when you're in Google, or if you are in um, YouTube, I want you to type first house Oh, this is fun. <laughs> ah. First house and then the word astrology. I'm going to put astro for short because I know you can hear me. And this is um, painstaking. <laughs> so... And you're gonna do that for all the houses. Second house, astrology. And you will find out everything you need to know about that house. Third house, fourth house. So go and look up each house so you can get an understanding of how that area of life works, okay? So this may be a little out of order, but you get it if you watch the whole video, you know? Now, let's get back to what I was trying to do. Okay, like Pluto. We're going to put Pluto here. So Pluto is in the first house, and let's say the sign is Libra. So you've got a Libra ascendant with Pluto in the first house. Well, what does that mean? We already know that the house itself represents an, the area of life, which would be, in this case, the physical body, your identity, things like that. But what does the sign mean? We know that the house is the area of life, so now we, we need to understand that the sign is the personality. This is how it... What? is going on out there <laughs> oh my gosh okay anyway the house is the area of life and the sign is the personality how is this going to feel how is this going to look okay so the identity the physical body is going to feel and look like a libra okay it's going to be literal embodiment of Libra energy, okay? But there's a catch because Pluto is right there, okay? You have a planet there. 
Pluto is there. And what happens is because the planet is there, even though, even though this is Libra energy in this area of life for this person, because there's a planet there, the planet has a has an influence over it's kind of layering another personality on top of the libra so then the conversation looks like in the area of life that is the physical body the identity things like that right it looks and feels like libra energy secondary to looking and feeling like Pluto energy, Plutonian energy. So if there is a planet in the house, the planet is going to express itself before the sign does. It's a layer and it. The planet is going to be expressed more. Like for me, true story, true story. <laughs> For me, where are my colors at? For me, I've got an 11 here. And then I've got Mars. Right? Y'all don't worry about that. It's all right. <laughs> so for me, I embody Mars energy. Okay? I like to get things done. Period. That is what I embody, you know, uh, my identity, my physical body is ruled by Mars energy first. And that becomes very obvious when I'm, you know, driven to get things done. I'm a go get it type person. I, I just like, I'm a make it happen type person. It's because that Mars is there, but up under, up under that, um impatience <laughs> right up under that is a is aquarius energy so it's not like a normal you know if mars was just by itself you know it's just motivated and it just wants to go no my mars wants to it's motivated toward the group the organization the collective Okay, because that's what Aquarian energy rules. So I embody, okay, the motivation and drive to be of service or to be the water bearer, bearer right? The Aquarian energy to the masses. That's the short version of the explanation of my first house. So you can find out and find your short, short version of your first house when you understand these things. You see what I mean? And it, it can be something that simple that changes the way that you think about yourself when you understand the energy that you are um, working with, right? The energy that is innate and within you. And when you understand the positive, positive and negative side of that energy and you can choose once you have the knowledge you can choose to operate on the positive or negative side of any energy once you realize or or, or find out that that energy is there okay so let's see 11 12 1 2 3 4 5 okay so i've got leo in my seventh house with no planets. So in my area of life that rules relationships, contracts, legal stuff, the personality is simply Leo because there's no planets there, okay? Now, because Aquarius is right across the street from Leo, all the signs have an axis, okay? Um, but I'm gonna just talk about this axis first. 
there's always a sign across the street, like Taurus and Scorpio are on an axis too. That's why sometimes Scorpio has Taurus tendencies and vice versa. Staying in the middle is kind of where you want to be. Um, so for me, for me, I have to balance going hard for the collective and dealing with relationships on a personal level. Like it's me against the other, literally. <laughs> because with this configuration, I pretty much belong to everybody. I'm not here, you know, for my own selfish reasons. Like this first house of mine says, you're here for the collective. But then across the street, if I lean too far this way, I'll get into a relationship and I won't be of service to the collective like I normally am. You see what I mean? Somehow I have to balance this. <laughs> and that's not fun, but hey, it's okay. So that's kind of what that looks like. So understand that when you have a planet in a house, that planet is going to be the main personality. So just imagine, I've got Jupiter, my moon, and who else? Uranus. Over here in my 10th house. The 10th house is how other people see you, like it's your public identity, right? And I've got Jupiter, the moon, and Uranus all over here in the 10th house. So it's like, well, this is how people see you when you're out there in the world doing your work. A lot of people call this the career house, you know, and it's, it can be helpful, but it's not necessarily the career house in Vedic astrology. This over here, the 11th house is what you want to be looking at when you're talking about money. Okay, um, the 11th house and the second house, particularly. But um, over here in this 10th house is the area of life where, you know, is how do people view you and what you do for a living? Well, <laughs> people view me as expansive because Jupiter is expansive. Hold up, Scorpio is right here too. That. There we go. So, but remember, the planets, the personality of the planet is going to show before the Scorpio energy shows, okay? So, in the area of public life, people see me as expansive. People see me as emotionally attached to my work. People see me as random as hell, <laughs> right? And then right up under all three of those layers, you've got Scorpio energy, which is very, very deep and transformative as well. So people also see me that way when it comes to my public image. So hopefully y'all understood that and you were, you were able to uh, track, because I don't want this video to be long. It was, I'm, I'm recording this th during a Mercury retrograde. <sighs> so, if you need to watch this video multiple times, I suggest you do so. Take your time. Don't try to learn your chart like in an instant. People be studying for like decades, okay? This is not something you learn overnight. I'm studying, okay? I just wanted to get your foot in the door so that when you talk to an astrologer, you know some of the basic language and you know some of the basic things about your chart because I get complaints a lot of times from people who get astrology reports and feel like they wasted money because they can't, they don't even understand it. So it's better to empower you to read your own chart than for you to just go to, a, to an astrologer blindly, <laughs> okay? 
So yes, um, I will put the link. And if any of you want an actual astrological report, just let me know because I can hook you up with an astrologer, with a Vedic astrologer, okay? But um, that is pretty much, you know, the planets in the houses with the signs. Watch part one if you hadn't watched part one. Um, and I will be making more videos on some other things. But for now, um, I wanna thank you so much for watching. And if you are new to my channel, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm gonna stop the share. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate donations are awesome because I always, always need donations, no matter what. I don't have to have a reason. In the banner of this channel, there is a there are a few links. One of them is for you to donate. I appreciate general donations. Um, this is how I keep going, okay? Not by money, but by people wanting more, giving me feedback, things like that. As long as I know that somebody's out there listening and I'm helping somebody, I'm gonna keep going. Um, and I appreciate all of the support that I get. Doesn't matter when, it's always on time, right? Um, have a beautiful evening, night, day, morning, I will talk to you soon, loves.